what I'm going to do now is show you how to uh, transfer your websites so that they're using your NAS server uh, instead of a hosting company. Uh, so you'll save money this way by uh, hosting it uh, using your NAS drive uh, onto your NAS server instead. Okay, so once uh, I've opened up the folder, the web folder, something you get with a NAS drive. Uh, if you don't have any web created software, uh, you can create websites with Joomla. Um, but at first I thought this is what you needed to install just to get you know my current websites onto an Astro drive. And I was messing about with this for a while, all this Joomla stuff, and uh, found out that wasn't actually the case. I could literally just drag my files, my root folder, of one of my websites onto an Astro drive's uh, QWeb folder. Um, and once I've done that, uh, I then rang up the hosting company that the website I was with already, and uh, yeah, I did a few things there. I uh, asked them to uh, change the um, the server that the domain name was assigned to. Okay, so um, I'll just show you. Okay, I'm just going through my notes here. So you copy and paste the website's root folder to the Q web folder of the NAS drive. Um, make sure you make the uh, name of this folder all lowercase. Um, <coughs> because uh, when you're typing this in, um, you'll be putting in the name of your NAS drive and then uh, whatever the root folder is to access uh, that website. So as it's on the web, you want it all lowercase and no special characters, of course, as is normal. Uh, okay, I'll show you my notes as well. So once you've done that, all you need to do then is contact the support team of a domain, of a domain supplier. Uh, in my case, it was EasySpace. Uh, then you tell them you want to set up your own one of your domain names to go to your server. Now, if you're already uh, hosting your website with a company, um, you'll want to uh, either wait for the for the contract to run out, or if you're eager to get this done, just tell them you want to cancel it, and then uh, follow these steps. Uh, in my case, it had run out anyway, and uh, I transferred the domain name to EasySpace because it was somewhere else. And then instead of signing up for their web hosting package, I uh, phoned them up and I told them I wanted uh, one of my domain names to go to my server and that would be the domain name or IP address if you haven't already um, bought a domain name of the NAS drive. Uh, they'll need to know the domain name of the root folder. That's an example, that's one of the uh, websites I do. So your server, forward slash, then whatever the folder is, the root folder. Oh yeah, one thing to mention here, uh, your HTTP here, not HTTPS. Okay. Uh, another thing to mention when on the phone to the um, to whoever your domain name is with, uh, tell them you want the address hidden. Obviously, you don't want it to show up saying connecting to, and then the name of your server. Uh, you, you want it to say whatever the website name is in the URL address, not the name of your server, of course. So that's something they can do as well. Just tell them you want it hidden, and that should be it. Then you don't really need to do anything else. Um, you just copy and paste your web files to that folder. Uh, if you were using Dreamweaver. One thing to point out is um, you won't need to put the files anywhere. It's an option to put files to web, upload them. Uh, now, as your local root folder of the website is going to be, you're going to change it to the the, uh, the NAS drive's root folder. Uh, all you need to do when changing, making changes to a page is just click on save. Uh, there's no uploading involved, so uh, you save time there as well. <coughs> uh, that's about it. Now to install websites with Joomla. Uh, I didn't need to because I've already created websites with Dreamweaver, and uh, I just put them on there. Copy the uh, folder on there. Uh, but Joomla, uh, there's a you can type that in uh, to a search engine. Install websites with QNAP and that's drive, and uh, it will give you steps on how to do that. Uh, one thing to mention is now I'm not sure if this is required or not. No, not Networking services. Yeah, here we go. Networking services. FTP service. Now I've enabled FTP service. Okay. That's one of the things I had to do to the NAS drive. This was when setting up Joomla though, so I'm not sure if this was actually required to um, put my website up uh, without using Joomla. Uh, but it's a good idea just to enable it anyway, just in case. And another option was get the web server. Yeah. Enable web server as well. website you probably won't need to do this but in application servers there's a mysql server and i had to enable that as well for joomla this is how you install joomla qpkg and this is how you install a lot of that answer and that's right you go here and get qpkg and you find loads of stuff put php up in there um, but yeah you've got the basics on uh, getting your website up and running using the natural 
I'm going to go over uh, a major problem here with uh, Microsoft. Uh, mapping network drives. Uh, <coughs> it seems to be a problem. Say you are uh, logged in on one computer uh, as one user. And uh, <coughs> even though you've shut down the computer, you, you try to log in as the same user on a different computer or um, even as a different user on the same computer. And you'll get an error message saying uh, some rubbish about uh, too many users. You, we cannot log you on as more than one user. So <coughs> you've mapped your network drives and you keep getting this annoying error. Now, it took me ages, but I'd look on the internet on how to solve this problem of not being able to log in uh, because it would think you're already logged in. Uh, <coughs> and this is what I came up with. You need to download and install the Windows Remote Server Administration Tools. Now, there are different uh, versions. There's a version for XP, uh, which I've installed on here. Uh, it will be different for Windows 7 uh, and also any other version of Windows. Uh, <coughs> but yeah, this is uh, using XP. You then go to Programs and Features or add and remove programs as it used to be before they change anything. Uh, turn on or off components and then there'll be uh, a menu, remote server administration tools and you want to enable the group policy manager. What you want to do is run gpedit.msc okay. We're in group policy now. Now in here is where you can assign scripts to log in on and log off. So scripts for log on and log off. Uh, again, technical here now. Uh, log on. I've created that script. Connect underscore drives dot bat. Uh, it's a batch file. So, I'll show you it in a minute. But this is where you go to add it. Click on add, script name, browse. Now the location of your batch file should be, um, once you've saved it, you then want to put it in a group policy folder in system 32 of Windows. Okay. And I'll just go back there. Right, here we are then. It's in the logon folder uh, in scripts. User scripts. Uh, yeah, group policy in Windows system 32 folder. Uh, then it's in user. Scripts logon and log off. Now I've created a logon script connect underscore drives. I'm going to open this so you can uh, see it. Okay. These are my folders. Uh, <coughs> now that's the LAN IP of the NAS drive. Okay. Now I may have mentioned before, the local computer, um, or the, the computer that the NAS drive is attached to, you put the LAN IP of the NAS drive, not its domain name. And then whatever folder uh, you want them up to. So, <coughs> hang on, that's not all of it. This is a script. That's echo space off, net space use space, and then the drive letter of the map network drive. Uh, see, these are the NAS drives folders. You'll find the drive letter in my computer. Uh, it'll be, you'll see your network drives and the letter next to it. So, yeah, net use, all of those. That's at log on. Now, at log off, you've got this. That's echo off net use and then the drive letters delete. Now what that's doing is telling Windows so it doesn't keep whinging about all oh, you're already logged on. Whenever your computer logs off it's deleting the network drives um, i.e. you're not logged on to them anymore and then a log on um, script that we just looked at uh, is reconnecting them, well connecting them sorry. So this deletes the drives, a log off and a log on have been connected. Now I did previously create a script uh, which was called reconnect drives uh, but you could run at Windows, and I set it to run at logon, but it didn't work. Yeah, this was it originally. Now you can see it's both scripts merged into one. Yeah, that's, that's a log off script that I did. Delete, 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 and the logon is those network drive folders. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, this didn't work though. Uh, and I had to just guess, well, maybe delete them at log off and then connecting them at logon with two different scripts will do it instead. And it did. Uh, that was surprising because I was scratching my head for days with that one, and it was a real pain because. Uh, um, it shouldn't be the case really, I don't see why you can't log on as other users or uh, why you get that problem in the first place. Um, uh, they'll probably figure some kind of security feature, you know, Windows, Microsoft, whatever, uh, but it's not, it's just a pain. <coughs> okay, so that's it. I'll just go over that again because it's tricky. Right, you install, you download and install Windows Remote Server Administration Tools. Uh, and then do all of that, get group policy management going. 
uh, <coughs> and then it's not gpmc.msc, it's gpedit.msc. That's something different. Group policy management console is something different to so gpedit.msc. So you might not even have to install all of that. You may be able to get gpedit.msc um, without doing all that first. Uh, but it's good to have gpmc uh, installed also when you're dealing with NAS drives and networking in general. Uh, if you can figure out how to use gpmc, I don't know how to use it yet. Uh, but yeah, this sort of problem. I'll gpedit.msc. Run gpedit.msc. Windows settings and user configuration. Scripts log on and log off. Log on. The script that's been added there is connect drives. Which looks like that. For log on, log off, disconnect drives. Which looks like that. And those are located in Windows System 32 Group Policy User. And then you shouldn't have those annoying messages uh, popping up every time you're trying to connect to your drives. Okay. That's it. So you want to copy and paste the website's root folder to the web folder of the NAS drive. Uh, make sure it's all lowercase, no spaces, etc. Uh, then contact the support team of the domain supplier. In my case, it was Easy Space. Um, and tell them you want to set up one of your domain names um, to go to your server instead of theirs. Give them the domain name uh, and the root folder. So it'll be uh, your domain name of your NAS drive. Or if you haven't bought a domain name for your NAS drive yet, uh, whatever the IP is of it, uh, forward slash the website folder. And one thing to note is this is all HTTP, not HTTPS. Um, tell them you want the address hidden. Uh, so instead of it saying in the URL address bar, uh, the name of your NAS drive, the name of your server, slash, and then the root folder, uh, which you won't want, you won't want uh, the name of your server showing. Uh, tell them you want it hidden, and then it should just say the name of your website. Now, if you don't already know, I'll quickly show you how to create your own patch file. Uh, you need to run Notepad. Let's see where there's Notepad. Okay. And then you type in your script. Uh, text, uh, and file, save as. Then down here, name it, and then instead of dot text, Type in, let me just show you an example. Put dot dat. This, yeah, desktop. So, so now when I look on the desktop, there we go, it's got a little icon there. A mouse over. Batch file. This is system 32 in the Windows folder, and I uh, appear to have two group policy folders. Uh, it's the hidden one we want to access. That one uh, just has ADM in there. This hidden one. This is where I've got user scripts. Log on and log off. I log on. So this is my log on script. Connect drives. So I log on. I want it to connect these drives. Uh, I take off. Uh, net user and then that's the drive letter. You'll be able to find that in uh, my computer next to the network drive. It'll tell you what drive letter is. And then uh, your NAS drive. I'll put the LAN IP of the NAS drive here, uh, and then whatever folder you want uh, connecting, and then just on another line, do all the other folders, and then you apply that script to log on in group policy, and then the log off script is disconnect drives, I'll save that, uh, that's echo off, net use, and then the drive letter, delete, and do that for all the drives, uh, so then when you log off, it runs this script, and it's telling Windows you're not connected anymore. So you're not going to get all that rubbish. Okay. <laughs>